So the objective here is to go over what Wikipedia says about NIST Special Publication 853. So I broke it down like this. They begin by saying that this publication provides a catalog of security and privacy controls for all U.S. information systems. But then this is confusing, they say, except those related to national security. I've been looking through this catalog and many of them look like they totally relate to national security. So maybe that's a correction we need to make on Wikipedia. Another confusing point that comes up pretty quickly is they eventually say this publication by NIST is a non-regulatory agency of the United States Department of Commerce. I'm pretty sure many of the things that is in this NIST special publication is literally required by law to do. If you don't know much about NIST, uh, watch my video called Who is NIST? But they say right here, NIST develops and issues standards, guidelines, and other publications to assist federal agencies in implementing the Federal Information Security Modernization Act. So yeah, it's good to modernize information security. But this publication is also supposed to help with managing cost-effective programs to protect their information and information systems. So I just thought it's kind of funny that it is called a special publication, like my picture says here. But the reason for this video series is there's so much technical documents that they produce, I wanted to start breaking them down. And it's logical that I start with the Wikipedia page to start very simply, and also look for errors to fix, thus contributing to Encyclopedia Galactica here. Well, they say the purpose of this special publication is to report on the Information Technology Laboratory's research, guidelines, and outreach efforts. So, so this idol, not the one many of you may have taken a certification test on for business sides of IT, but this is really interesting. The Information Technology Laboratory, just the site itself, has a lot of interesting information. Cutting edge reporting on stuff. Reliable too, right? I just really like their website. Now, specifically, they're going to cover steps in the risk management framework that addresses security controls for federal information systems. And it's going to be in accordance with FIPS. Many of you have probably heard about that. To summarize, FIPS is simply requirements for information processing, data processing. If you're a programmer, sometimes your code has to be FIPS compliant. So to further prove their point, they're saying that this special publication includes selecting an initial set of baseline security controls based on a FIPS 199 worst case impact analysis. And they're tailoring the baseline security controls and supplementing the security controls based on organizational assessment of risk. So maybe when you think of NIST, think that NIST loves FIPS. I like the last paragraph here because they're saying that the security rules cover 17 areas, including access control, incident response, business continuity, and disaster recovery. I wonder what the other 13 areas they didn't list are. Maybe we can insert a nice little chart here. If you ever look at man pages on Wikipedia, they're sometimes really cool because they have charts like this. So I'll put that on my to-do list to create a chart here with those 17 areas. Just look at the page itself. There is very few pictures, uh, just a lot of text. Bullet points are nice. We're about to go into those bullet points. But we still have two more paragraphs to go in the purpose section. They say here a key part of the assessment and authorization process for federal information systems. Okay, so you have to test, you have to assess, um, and then there has to be this authorization for federal information systems. For this to happen, there's this process of selecting and implementing a subset of controls. These are also known as safeguards. Um, so you select these controls from the security control catalog. You find this catalog in Appendix F. So let's go over there. And the database part of this special publication is what most professionals are concerned with. So once we go to this National Vulnerability Database, we can go down to Appendix F. There's the XAML breakout of it, or we could go with this to see the objectives. But I like this one because it's the full XAML of controls and objectives. So here are those controls. This is what the organization should be doing. A lot of this stuff is going to maybe sound like, duh, you should do this, but you know people, sometimes they need everything written out specifically. 
So go to the security control catalog to implement those controls that will allow you to assess and allow officials to eventually authorize your information systems. And this paragraph basically says what I just did by saying that these controls are the management, operational, and technical safeguards prescribed for the information system to protect confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of the system and its information. To implement the needed safeguards or controls, agencies must first determine the security category of their information systems in accordance with the provisions of FIPS 199, and that's a very low standard. So what are they saying here? Well, you have to determine if it's low, moderate, or high. This will determine the baseline collection of controls you must implement and monitor. Our agencies have some freedom in this, it says. Which leads me to one of the confusing parts of this Wikipedia article, the compliance part. Agencies are expected to be compliant with NIST security standards and guidelines within one year of the publication date. And there's revisions, by the way. So you must be compliant unless otherwise directed, and information systems that are under development are expected to be compliant upon de deployment. So I'm really just curious about the legal side of this, which is a rabbit hole I shouldn't dive down. But I'd enjoy reading some blog articles or news articles about people who have been non-compliant and the consequences of that. You know, other than seeing them on the news for being a victim of a ransomware attack or something. Well, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and dive into the revisions that this publication has gone through. And we're going to start with the third revision. There's not much to say about the first and second. The part I want to point out about the third revision is they say that in the past, NIST guidance has not applied to government information systems identified as national security systems. So maybe, because this is the third revision, it eventually became national security related. I mean, this special publication is providing a common language for government information systems. The revised security control catalog includes state of the practice safeguards and countermeasures to address advanced cyber threats and exploits. So I imagine even if an organization wasn't forced to do this, forced to be compliant, you still would want to because it's going to protect you. And studying the latest attacks is the good stuff to me. I really enjoy it. So here's 10 significant changes that revision three goes through. I'll draw your attention to the first one. Simple is nice and having only six steps to manage your risk is nice. Um, and I thought that was interesting that there happens to be six steps when you want to classify information. I just created a video on that. But to focus, uh, let's go down to number six here. Guidance on using the risk management framework for legacy information systems and for external information system service providers. This makes me think of the interesting thing about legacy systems, how, you know, reliable they are, partly because they've just survived the test of time. But on the other hand, with new organizations starting out with legacy, legacy systems, that doesn't make a lot of sense. There's hardware limitations to some of those legacy systems. So there's an interesting balance I often hear about the government trying to walk. And when it comes to security, that just must be extra tough. And the last one here is interesting strategy for harmonizing FISMA security standards and guidelines with international security standards, such as ISO and IEC. Getting everybody to work together for the benefit of the world is good. In a previous video, I talked about a conspiracy theory with NIST and the NSA which is just interesting because for worldwide or international security standards to have an embedded backdoor or something in them, I imagine these organizations would not be happy with trickery like that. Well, now for the fourth revision here, as part of an ongoing cybersecurity partnership among the United States uh, DOD, the intelligence community itself, and the federal civil agencies, NIST has launched its by biennial update to special publication 853 so that means every other year at first i didn't think that was a real word but the takeaway revision 4 is saying that there are these updates and it's good to update bad guys are coming out with new ways to be bad every day so here are the areas that are getting updated the insider threat Notice this is number one, because I think like 54%, I saw this statistic somewhere, 50 per 54% of attacks are because of employees. And maybe that's why NIST came out with this building an information technology security awareness training program that I'll read into. 
they have to publish stuff like this because it is the insiders or employees that are often the threat. But another area is in software applications, security, uh, social networking, mobile devices, cloud computing. That's a lot to put in just one item. But the other area is cross-domain solutions, advanced persistent threats, supply chain security, industrial process, control system, so SCADA stuff, and then uh, privacy. There's a fifth revision that really got me going. They're making a semantics move here by turning the word federal into information systems. They make a big semantics move here by taking the words federal and information systems, simply removing them so everybody knows that these regulations can be applied to anyone and any system, not just information systems. I made a bad comment here because a 2017 isn't really like our latest. This is just when the draft was published. But at the time this article was written, they're talking about a final draft release being planned for December 2018, and then the final publication date is planned for March 2019. But here's the major changes for revision 5. I'll draw your attention to number 2, where it says fully integrating the privacy controls into the security control catalog. So this is, bec this is important because society is increasingly caring about privacy. For good reason, I'd say. I'm not getting into that debate now. But NIST cares about it, so that's nice to see in revision 5. Another thing is they're eliminating the term information system and replacing it with the term system so the controls can be applied to any type of system. And here are the other examples of systems out there something called general purpose systems, but the cyber physical system is an interesting system to think about, to guard against. There's an industrial process control system, very important, like national security important at times. And then these IoT devices have their have a system that we can focus on. We mentioned number five before. Unlike number four, they're not giving us examples of non-federal organizations, but yeah, they're de-emphasizing the federal focus. Number seven is interesting. It's about clarifying the relationship between security and privacy to improve the selection of controls necessary to address the full scope of security and privacy risks. All right, so those are the revisions. Now for the versions. 853A, NIST Special Publication 853A, provides a set of procedures for conducting assessments of security controls and privacy controls employed with federal information systems and organizations. The procedures are customizable and can be easily tailored to provide organizations with the needed flexibility to control security control assessments and privacy control assessments that support organizational risk management processes. So with this version in effect, now we have revisions for that one. Revision 1 calls it the Guide for Assessing Security Controls in Federal Information Systems and Organizations. Seeing the word guide made me think of STIGs. But this version will describe testing and evaluation procedures for the 17 required control families. You need to do this testing periodically, and federal agencies need to use this testing to determine what security controls are necessary to protect organizational operations, assets, individuals, other organizations, and the nation itself. According to Ron Ross, who's a senior computer scientist and information security researcher at NIST, these guidelines will also allow federal agencies to assess if mandated controls have been implemented correctly, are operating as intended, and are meeting the organization's security requirements. So we're going to end with where we began here, because now it says to do this, to meet these uh, security requirements, version A describes assessment methods and procedures for each of the security controls mandated. So it's a mandate. So what I'm reading in special publication 853 has to happen. These guidelines are meant to limit confusion and ensure that agencies interpret and implement the security controls in the same way. And speaking of confusion, now that we've read about revision 1, they skip, at least in the Wikipedia article, to revision 4 by saying they wanted to do this in order to better reflect the NIST special publication 853, or 800-53, um, or 800-53, because that's what it's meant to be used with. So though it's reasonable, still kind of strange. And in a future video here, I'll go ahead and go through excerpts of 853 and then go into 853 or dash 53A. This stuff could be hard to remember, but I hope these videos can help.